वेलकम टू द नाचा हीरो शो कीप इट नाचा मेरा है नाचा हीरो शो You are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Anne Bracken. Anne Bracken is the author of Crash, a memoir of over-medication and recovery. And you can find out more about Anne Bracken and her wonderful work at her website, AnneBrackenAuthor.com. Welcome, Anne Bracken. Hi, Catherine. Thank you so much for having me today. Now, we're going to be talking about, frankly, a very sensitive subject, but one that affects literally millions of people all over the Western world, which is people who have turned to medication to deal with depression, anxiety, and pain. And yet these people who turn to all these medications, many of them discover that all these pain and psychiatric medications don't actually solve their problems. And this is why so many people end up turning to natural healing because they're looking for what actually works and they don't want all the side effects of the medications. So will you share for our audience, why did you write your book, Crash, a memoir of over-medication and recovery? Well, I wrote the book because both my mother and I suffered from depression. My mother suffered from depression for over 40 years, most of my life uh, before she died. And she took all the pills that the doctors told her to take. She had electroconvulsive therapy treatment. She went into a hospital. She went to therapy. And yet she never got well. So... Um, I vowed as a child and a teenager to never be like my mother. That just wasn't going to happen to me. And for much of my life, it didn't until I hit my 40s. And then I had a, an experience of very deep depression. And I also experienced a seven-year migraine. So I wrote the book to explore our parallel journeys because while mom was over medicated, and you might say, well, that's the 60s and 70s, I was over medicated in the 90s and 2000s. So psychiatry did not change very much, and yet our knowledge base has changed. Now, if you are listening to our broadcast and you're on any form of psychiatric or pain medication, know that we're on our side, we're on your side. And we are not here to judge you. We're here to share information with you about what may actually work to turn the tide for you. Now, I myself am the author of 10 books. And two of my books are about how to heal depression naturally without drugs. The most updated version being Banish the Blues Now, which is available at paperback, audiobook, and um, ebook. So if you don't like to read, you can listen to it. And also, um, Anne Bracken, the author of Crash, a member of Overmedication and Recovery, talked about the pain that she experienced. And one of my 10 books is all about how to get out of pain naturally without drugs. And that book is the difference between pain and suffering. So just realize if you're listening to this broadcast, that you're like millions of other people, you, you feel bad, whether it's mentally or physically, you go to the doctor, they hand you some pills, and it may or may not work. Maybe it works for a while, but long term, it doesn't work. So as you know, Ann Bracken, so many of our audience 
have been told and the, the big line in psychiatry for many years has been, you know, oh, you've got a chemical imbalance, therefore you need to take pain medication. So what is your understanding um, and, and my understanding, the latest research that came out actually in, I believe it was 2022, that people on psychiatric medication actually do not have different brain chemistry from all the rest of us. What is your understanding about the causes of depression? So my, when I was going through my own experience, I, I thought the idea that it was only due to a chemical imbalance. It didn't make any sense to me. Uh, I would say to doctors, well, you mean I'm fine one day and then the next day for no reason at all, my brain chemicals go off and they're like that for the rest of my life. It just didn't make sense. So as I went through the whole experience, I challenged that idea, but I got so much pushback from doctors um, that nobody was really listening to me. But my understanding now, and actually my my strongest compass throughout my own experience was that there were things that happen in your life that are very difficult or very painful. And that is what causes you to experience a period of darkness or deep sadness or low energy. And we call those kinds of things depression in our culture. Right. But it seems to me that those, those are responses to overwhelming difficulties. Well, one of the things that we know is that trauma, absolutely, trauma and PTSD rewires the brain. And as you noticed, many of us who have gone through periods of depression or anxiety, part of what's happening is that this is a response to events that has happened to us. And it right. doesn't mean that we can't get help. We can get help. Now, in your book, you talk about both you and your mom, and you took numerous psychiatric medications, and your mother also took electroshock therapy. I'm so sorry for that. And part of what motivated me to write my first book was I had a very dear friend who had had depression for many years, and he tried this, he tried this drug, he tried that drug. And then he tried electroshock therapy and even electroshock therapy did not help him get out of depression. And he ended up committing suicide. He gassed himself in his car. So when I wrote my first book and then again, the updated version is Spanish, the blues. Now I was really, really motivated to help because there's so many people. And if you're listening, you may be one of them where you've taken the, the drugs, you've been the patient, you've taken the drugs faithfully, you've done lots of counseling, and yet you're still depressed. And so I wanted to write my books in order to help people talk about what actually worked. How common is the experience that you and your mother went through um, of being on multiple psychiatric medication and pain medication? The statistics that I have found vary from um, the drugs not being effective for 30 to 50% of the people who take them, all the way up to 85% of the people who take them. And what I learned in discovering my father's records about my mother's illness, once I looked up the drugs that she was taking, I could see that the effects of those drugs, two of the biggest effects were insomnia and anxiety. And those effects were both caused by the drug she was taking rather than being helped by the drug she was taking. Um, in the reading I've done about how antidepressants work, I've, I've discovered that you don't have a chemical imbalance to begin with, but the drugs change your brain. And, uh, cause the receptors in your brain to, to pull back so that they're not as overloaded with the neurochemicals like serotonin. And so 
your brain actually changes in response to the medication and the medications can cause things. Um, one of the most common is psychic numbing, which you just, you, you don't feel anything. And that's something that I would constantly say to my doctor, I can't feel anything, you know, which should have been a sign that I was over medicated and they should have cut back on the drugs. Instead, they either changed them or they gave me more. And yeah. nobody told me about psychic numbing. I didn't discover that for a long time. So Anne Bracken, the author of Crash, a memoir of over medication and recovery, you bring, bring up several really important points. The first is that scientific research shows that long-term um, effects of these antidepressants is actually depression. So long-term, the psychiatric medications actually decrease your body's ability to uptake serotonin. So they absolutely derange your brain chemistry. And secondly, the side effects of the drugs themselves. So here are some practical tips if you're listening to this broadcast. There are two websites that I recommend that you look at. The first is rxlist.com. Now rxlist.com, you can go to that website and if you're taking any prescribed medication, you can look up the side effects of the drugs. So, so many of my clients who are on multiple medications and, um, and frequently when people are on medications, they're on many medication. First of all, you start by looking up the individual side effects of your drugs and circling all the ones that you have. And then there's a second website, which is epocrates.com. And if you're on more than one medication of any kind, part of what you wanna look at is how all these drugs interact. So I've had clients where it may literally take me an hour to write down all their medications. Mm. And um, I can remember a client I had years ago, she was literally on 15 psychiatric medications and she felt like her brain was getting electric shocks all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and her medical doctors were not actually looking at how all these drugs are interacting. So a very first step you can take if you're on multiple medications is Number one, how are, what are the individual side effects of the medications? Number two, what side effects of these individual medications am I experiencing? And number three, look at scientific research on how these your medications interact. And again, you may be on an antidepressant, an anti-anxiety medication, ADD medication, and then medications for other things like your heart or your liver or your kidneys or or your blood pressure, or what have you. And you really want to see how all these things are interacting. And then talk to your doctor. So now in your case, you are a poet. <laughs> and lots of lots of people talk about the the healing benefits of writing. How did poetry and journaling help you to understand and overcome depression and anxiety? Well, uh, my one of my cousins sent me a wonderful CD by a poet named David White, and the CD is called The Poetry of Self-Compassion. Mm. And that was my real introduction to the power of poetry. I was struggling. I was suffering and feeling suicidal for long periods of time. And he read a poem by Mary Oliver called The Wild Geese, which talks about... Uh, Leave, leaving your house in the middle of the night and there being a storm and the road is full of branches and everybody's begging you to stay, but you know you have to leave because in leaving, you're saving the only life that you can save. And when I heard those lines, I, I said, yeah, that somebody gets it. Somebody understands this is what's happening to me. This is not a chemical imbalance. This is like a deep, spiritual journey that I'm on and somebody else understands it. So the that was my introduction to poetry and the the idea of metaphor of of some 
kind of darkness, like Dante talks about in the Inferno, you know, in the middle of my life, I awoke in a dark wood. Those poetic words spoke to my experience. Um, it, I didn't need the science. I needed somebody to validate my feelings. Even though I was still caught up in a lot of mystery, I felt like with, with the guidance from literature and poetry to, to acknowledge my feelings that I could somehow work my way through. And um, I started journaling for myself before I ever knew that journaling could be therapeutic. I would just write and write usually when I was angry or upset and just fill notebooks full of my feelings. And sometimes if I was really, really upset, I would get big pieces of, um, of drawing paper and I'd sit on the floor with markers and just write in big block letters. And it was very visceral. It was, you know, the, the writing, the connection with the body, the mind body connection. I believed in all those things, even if I didn't see an immediate result. I, I just had a strong sense that this is the way that, that I was going to be able to get back to health. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. And we're listening to the poet and author Anne Bracken talk about her new book, Crash, a memoir of over-medication and recovery. Let's take a break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors. And we'll be right back to learn more about what you can do naturally to heal depression and pain. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. So, Anne Bracken, author of Crash, a memoir of over-medication and recovery, you bring up the importance of journaling and um, poetry. And journaling is really interesting because there's a lot of scientific research that journaling will even heal things like asthma, which you think, how would that even relate? But there's a lot of uh, value in to putting down your thoughts and feelings on paper. Now, for our audience, because here at the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio, we're always about talking about what we can do to heal ourselves naturally. So I'd like to go over some action steps that you can take that if you are experiencing depression and anxiety, that you can move yourself towards greater balance. So I'm going to start on the physical level, because as a medical intuitive healer, I look at a person is physical, energetic, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So I'm going to go first. So based on my 29 years of experience in natural healing, here are some positive steps you can do to heal yourself naturally if you have depression and anxiety. The first is, and I mean, these are all big uh, picture items. Obviously, there's a tremendous amount of detail. The first is you want to look at, do you have any underlying medical conditions that actually cause your depression? So for example, thyroid disease, a lot of people who've got thyroid disease, it's um, actually, it, mass, it manifests mentally, emotionally as depression. Do so you want to look at, are there any medical conditions or heart disease that are causing your low mood? You want to balance your blood sugar. Because every time when your blood sugar is on a roller coaster throughout the day, every time your blood sugar drops, your serotonin level drops and your stress hormones go up, you want to actually test your adrenal function. What I find a lot of my clients, I'm like, you're not crazy, you're just exhausted. So many people who've gone through years of chronic stress, they're in adrenal burnout. And their cortisol level is so low, they don't have enough stress hormones to actually respond to the stress. So severe adrenal burnout, which again goes back to, do you have a medical condition? UK Health Radio, 
the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. Do you want to look at medical conditions? You want to balance your blood sugar? You want to test your adrenal function? And then another huge one, um, and I find this interesting because uh, you can actually scientifically test your amino acid levels. Now, what are amino acids? Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And so many people, even people who eat meat, have chronic amino acid deficiencies. And as we talked about, even if you've been on years of psychiatric medication, you may have actually messed up your brain chemistry just by taking all these psychiatric drugs. So you can do lab tests on your amino acid function. And I cannot tell you in my 29 years of experience in natural healing, how many clients I have helped heal their mind naturally by balancing their amino acid levels. Mm -hmm. So amino acids are the uh, building blocks of your brain chemistry. So if you have amino acid deficiencies, you may have de uh, deficiencies in the basic brain chemistry that you need in order to feel happy and calm. And you can run lab tests. What I find so interesting about the psychiatric profession is that if you had any other deficiency, like let's say you had a thyroid problem, well, your medical doctor would scientifically test your thyroid levels. Or if you had a cholesterol problem, they would scientifically test your cholesterol. However, when it comes to the prescription of psychiatric drugs, no one's actually testing your brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. They just go, they listen to you and they go, oh, and you and your mother had these problems. Let me write you a script for a bunch of medication. And it may be an educated guest, it may be a scientific guest, but it's still a guess. And no one's looking at what do we need to do to balance your brain chemistry naturally. So again, you want to look at are there any, any underlying medical conditions? You want to balance your blood sugar. I joke the key to life is balancing your blood sugar. You want to test your adrenal function because if you're in adrenal burnout, you will be depressed. And then you want to test your amino acid levels. So before we move on to any of the other levels on a physical level, Ann Bracken, was there anything that you found helpful to help you on the physical body level with your depression? I did a lot of walking. Yes, great answer. And <laughs> scientific research shows that um, at Duke University, they did a study and cutting to the chase people who exercise regularly do better at healing and healing their mind and healing depression than people who exercise and took psychiatric medication. So long-term regular exercise. Okay, now on the energetic level, all right, and the, your energy system includes your chakras, your acupuncture system and the breath. Some of the things that may help you, breath work, is incredibly helpful. One of my 10 books is called The Little Book of Breath Work, and it includes a breathing routine that I find will cut anxiety in half in literally eight minutes. And what's so great about breathing exercises is that it keeps you out of your story. We all have a story. My mom did this, my dad this did this, this and that happened to me. And sometimes our story that we tell ourselves keep us in a victim mindset or keep us in a poor me mindset that uh, just uh, entraps us into this depression and anxiety. But what is so cool about breath work is in a very short period of time, you can put yourself in a state of bliss and peace just through breathing exercises. So Ian Bracken on an energetic level, Anything that you recommend for our audience? I uh, 
have practiced meditation for quite a long time and you know just to go inside and quiet myself and connect with my higher source i i found that really helpful i um have little angel cards with a a word on them like surrender or peace or playfulness and every day i i would draw an angel card and i would have that be my word for the day and i'd leave it on the table so i could see it and i just you know, I, I put a lot of things in place that helped me to stay focused on the good. I had um, a saying from my acupuncturist that I framed. It was on a card. Uh, crisis in Chinese means turning point. So I didn't exactly know what the turning point was going to be. But I thought if I can look at the crisis that I'm in, in a, in a more positive way, it's going to help me to get through it. Beautiful and wonderful suggestions. And the way I look at a person is physical, energetic, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So we're getting to the emotional, mental, and spiritual. Now on an emotional level, one of the things that I find incredibly helpful, someone once asked me, what is, what do you think Catherine, the most powerful natural healing remedies are? And I would say flower essences. Flower essences are made from flowers. They have no side effects. They work on the emotional, mental, and spiritual levels. So I like to find someone's constitutional remedy, which is going to help to balance out your core emotional issues. And you mentioned poetry and journaling, which are so helpful to help us acknowledge what's going on and, and actually face our feelings. Um, and you also mentioned the side effect of emotional numbing. Uh, one of the things that I find helpful for people is when you've been on psychiatric medication and you're, you're, you've literally been shut down for possibly decades is to spend time every day and connect to what am I actually feeling? And if you go to one of my websites, Unlimited Energy Now, and go to media and free downloads, there's an emotions chart because every organ in your body has emotions related to it. And when you've had your emotions shut down by taking psychiatric medication for so many years and been numb as Ann Bracken talked about, you may be actually disconnected from your feelings. So by journaling, writing poetry, or taking time every day to just sit with yourself and acknowledge how you're feeling. That is a very healthy thing. And what I find as a medical intuitive healer, so many people think, well, when I'm mentally, emotionally healthy, I'm never gonna have a bad day. I'm never gonna feel depressed. I'm never gonna feel fearful. And that's actually just not true. The word emotion means energy in motion. And so when you're numb, when you shut yourself down, you're, all, you're not only shutting down the bad feelings, you're also shutting off the joy. So reconnecting to how you feel. So on an emotional level in Bracken, in addition to poetry and journaling, any other suggestions for our audience that you have? To connect with how you feel? It, um, uh, to heal on the emotional level. Okay. Um, I think finding someone who can really listen to you and uh, affirm what you're saying to them. You know, a lot of people that are depressed, and I put myself in that category, uh, people who have experienced depression are in very, very painful situations. In my case, it was a very destructive marriage. And I had gone to therapy with my ex-husband and we had worked on things, but things never stayed in a good spot for very long. And I, I didn't realize it when I became depressed, but, you know, I think that that's what it was. It was the, the manifestation of all my emotional pain came up in the depression. And it also came up in the severe migraine that I experienced. Right. Great observation. And you mentioned you'd had a migraine for seven years. Yes. And again, I mentioned that one of my books is about how to heal, how pain naturally, the difference between pain and suffering. And again, going to why you don't want to shut off your emotions. 
When you shut off your emotions, you literally block the flow of energy in the body and it can manifest when you shut everything down emotionally that can manifest in severe chronic unresolved physical pain. So if you're experiencing severe chronic unresolved emotional pain, I promise you as a medical intuitive healer, there's emotional issues that you are not facing or resolving. Now on a mental level, and this is interesting in my 29 years of experience in natural healing, what I find some of the hardest people to help overcome depression are the people who are blocked on the mental level. What do I mean by this? So what I mean is that you have thoughts and beliefs. Like I think the world is a terrible place. The world is full of vicious, evil, awful people. <laughs> Einstein said the most important question is whether or not you consider the universe to be a friendly place. And so when you, in my work as a medical intuitive healer, I may be looking at, do you have thoughts and beliefs that are actually causing you to feel depressed? Because one of the things that we know is that your mind controls your emotions. So mm -hmm. if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, then by definition, you're going to be running some thoughts in 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 your mind and beliefs it's like a faulty operating system mm -hmm. right just like you have a mac or a pc and it's got an operating system your mental operating system needs to be reworked and so many of us are so committed to our stinking thinking it's like no the world really is a horrible place and i really am a victim and those people really did do me wrong when you're cemented in those beliefs that are causing you to feel depressed and anxious, then you, you really, again, would do well by working with some to help you identify what are the thoughts that you are holding in mind that are causing you that way. Um, there's a wonderful spiritual text called A Course in Miracles, and that is very helpful for um empowering people to begin to release their stinking th thinking right so on a mental level and again you mentioned poetry you mentioned journaling what are some of the ways that you think people can begin to heal themselves naturally by working on the mental level uh one of my friends recommended that i I get the book uh, Feeling Good by Dr. David Burns. And I I got that book and I'd never heard the things that he was saying, like how your thoughts could trap you in certain patterns. And I realized, you know, that one of the thoughts I always had was, was what he calls all or nothing thinking. You're either wonderful or you're terrible. There's there's nothing in the middle. You're either perfect or you're completely flawed. Um, so that was a trap for me. And, you know, another trap was feeling like I wasn't good enough. Mm. And what David Burns talks about is for more, he doesn't say you have to force yourself, but I had to force myself because I didn't think I needed to do this. But anyway, I realized I did. He says to make a chart and in the chart, write down your um, unrealistic thought, like, I need to be perfect or people won't like me and write down how you feel when you think that. So like 80% anxious and 20% depressed. He, he, he asked you to be very linear about the whole process and give everything a percentage. And then he says to come up with a more uh, balanced thought about your situation. So I have lots of friends and they like me, even though I'm not perfect. And then how do I feel? So after you work that system for a while, and if you're as feeling as depressed as I was, you're going to fill up the chart every day with all kinds of thoughts. And um, but after a while, you'll you'll learn. I don't have to keep cycling that in my brain. That's not helping me. And I call it going down the rabbit hole. You know, I'll, I'll have a thought, and then I'll say. You just don't have to go down that rabbit hole. You can pull yourself back and you can change what you're thinking. Brilliant. 
fabulous, incredibly helpful information, Anne Bracken. Um, and, and you mentioned something else there um, because you talked about the need for perfectionism. On the mental level, one of the things that I do in my medical intuitive readings and in my healing work is I look at what is your relationship with yourself? So you have a relationship with yourself just like you have a relationship with everyone else. And your relationship with yourself is the most important relationship in your life because all your other relationships are based on that. So some of the you know, key dramas that you may doing, be doing on the mental level is poor me. So when you're trapped in poor me, it's like, oh no, poor me, there it goes again. I'm tired, I'm done wrong by. Another one is uh, intimidator, where you're bullying yourself. Why didn't I, why am I not perfect yet? Um, poor me, intimidator, um, aloof, where you're just disconnecting, disconnecting from your feelings, disconnecting from your life, and, and so on. So on a mental level, you can look at work with someone to help you realize what is your relationship with yourself. And when you do not have a healthy relationship with your true self, it means you're not showing up as your true self. And um, which brings me to the spiritual level. Now, you mentioned meditation, which is so helpful. Um, one of the things that I talk about in my work is what I talk about as soul medicine. So here at the Natural Healing Show, we talk about supplements, we talk about herbs and all these wonderful natural healing remedies because you are a soul having a human experience the most important uh, level to work on is your the soul level and many times what i find and i talk about this in my 10th book reading the soul when we're feeling depressed or anxious what what's really going on is you're having what i call a breakdown to breakthrough where your old structures no longer serve you. So you mentioned being in a marriage where you were completely miserable. Well, it, even though it's difficult, sometimes we have to look at the structures in our lives and, and allow our soul to guide our way. So soul medicine. So this is what actually feeds you, feed your soul. Writing poetry, time in nature, hugs, sunlight, fresh air, companionship of a uh, pet, um, uh, what I call um, soul families. So maybe you're missing a husband or a brother or sister. Well, you can create the companionship of like-minded people. So on the soul or spiritual level, Anne Bracken, what are, what are some of the things that you have found helpful in your journey to heal yourself from depression, pain, and anxiety? Well, for a long time, I was part of a prayer group. Um, and every week, my several women friends and I would get together at different houses and we would have a prayer group. So we would bring readings to share. Um, we would each have a turn to talk about how we were feeling and what was going on in our lives. And we could put forth an intention in the group and um, and we could all pray for each other. And I remember um, particularly two of my friends would come to my house and they would sit on either side of me on, on the sofa and they would just be with me. Um, that, that was a real form of strength. And even though I'm not in the same prayer group, I can still call those people. And we often pray on the phone together. Um, or send out intentions to each other and form a, a prayer, some type of prayer chain. Oh, that is just so incredibly beautiful. And, and the fact that you have this prayer group and you know that you can turn to these people at any time, that's like a win-win where you're, they're helping you, you're helping them. So incredibly powerful, natural healing. Now, Anne Bracken, the author of Crash, a memoir of overmedication and recovery, if you could share for our audience three main takeaways from your experiences dealing with depression, what would they be? 
I think the first thing would be is to, to know that what you're feeling is not permanent. So there's no such thing as permanent depression. Um, even though I was stuck in feelings of depression for four years, I never believed that it was going to be permanent. I always had a sense that I was going to get out of that situation, no matter what it took. So know that it's not permanent. Um, the other takeaway that I have is to be gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're feeling low energy. You're feeling very sad. You're feeling overwhelmed for a reason. And you could look at it uh, as your life really calling out to you. So it, I, I tried to use it as a life check opportunity. It took me a long time to acknowledge that the marriage was the, the real problem in and of itself. Um, but that was an opportunity for me to, to look at how I was living. And then the third thing is to, um, you know, try whatever makes you feel good, do that for the day. So, you know, some days when you're going through a period of depression, you feel better than other days. So just take that day, take that moment, make the best of it. Try to stay in the moment because the more we can stay in the moment, the less we're going to run, run ahead in our minds to, you know, Oh, I, I worry how I'm going to feel tomorrow. Oh, I worry if this is permanent, you know, just stay in the moment and enjoy, enjoy whatever you can. I remember, you know, I used to buy inexpensive hand lotion, just go to the store, buy something inexpensive. And when I went through that long period of depression, I decided that one thing that made me feel really good was to buy very nice hand lotion that had a wonderful fragrance. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I treated myself. And every time I put on that hand lotion, I had a little lift. So it doesn't take anything big to, to make you feel better, but just to know that you're being kind to yourself. And it can be something as simple as hand lotion. This is such really wonderful, helpful information. And I really appreciate your third point, which is about giving yourself permission to make yourself happy. One of the things that I do as a medical intuitive healer, when I have clients who are depressed, I, I talk about, you know, if you think about a spectrum, so with blue on one end and red on the other, and you can do a lot of hard work on the depression, on the trauma, on the, the reasons why you're feeling depressed. And in addition, you can figure out what I like to do is, what are the top five things that I need in my life right now to be happy? Mm -hmm. And I use that word specifically, what do I need to be happy? And it may mean, it may be, I need to make more friends. <laughs> I, it may mean uh, I need to take up new hobbies. It may need, mean I need to make time to nurture myself. So I've got a whole list of what, people need in order to be happy. But when you look at that, uh, and those reasons are really going to be unique to you, because it's you're a unique soul, you ha have a unique reason for being here on earth. It may be, I need to do something uh, meaningful in my life, I need to feel like I'm contributing to the lives of others, I may need to go out and do volunteer work and help those who are le less fortunate than me. So really spending time with that. Now, Anne Bracken, the author of Crash, a memoir of over-medication and recovery, you say that both you and your mother were victims of polypharmacy. What is polypharmacy and why does the audience need to understand that and why is it so dangerous? Well, we've already touched on polypharmacy, Catherine, with your story of one of your clients taking 15 medications at a time. My mother often took five or six different drugs at a time. And when I got near the end of my experience with depression and chronic pain, I was on 10 medications, four mm -hmm. psychiatric drugs and six different drugs for headache pain, including methadone. 
So the reason that, and that's called polypharmacy. Usually it's defined as taking more than two drugs to treat a condition. And the reason that it's so dangerous is because these combinations have, they've never been tested. They're just very arbitrary. I think a lot of times doctors begin to have favorite drugs and maybe they've seen certain people respond to drugs or they've had good experience with these drugs. So they prescribe that to a great majority of their patients, but they, it doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you. And you don't know what all those chemicals are doing inside your body. So when I wrote my book, I discovered, I, I didn't know about the two resources that you mentioned, but I did discover drugs.com. And drugs.com also has a feature where you can put in all the drugs you're taking, and it's called an interaction checker. And then you can hit check interactions and it gives you a full report. And it rates the danger, <laughs> the danger of the drug combinations. And the, the combinations that I was on, including Valium and methadone and other psychiatric drugs, that was considered a very dangerous combination because Valium and methadone depress your respiration. And I was falling asleep at every traffic light when I was driving. It was, and nobody ever said, you know, I guess I should have realized I shouldn't be driving but nobody else was gonna drive. My kids were too young, my husband was working. And, you know, I have I eventually had two car accidents because of the over-medication. And that's when I finally turned to um, an energy healer who helped me to get off of all that pain medication. But the reason this is important to know is because if you just ask around to your friends, you'll find many of them are taking four and five drugs at a time. And I just wish that doctors would use drugs.com and look at the interactions. You know, as a patient, I didn't know anything about that. Most people don't know anything about that. They think if you're if the doctor is giving it to you, it's okay. And many doctors are very reluctant to listen to you when you say, you know, I, I really wonder if it's the drugs that are making me feel so bad. They, they almost can't believe that because the drugs are what they have to give you. So it, it really, unfortunately, until there's a little bit more of a breakthrough, I think in the medical profession, it behooves people to do some of the research themselves. So Ann Bracken, you are so brave for sharing this story. And I know that now you are off all the psychiatric medication and all the pain medication. And it's so wonderful that you're sharing your story. And I also, I was on lithium and antidepressants for 18 years. I got off all of that stuff when I was 34. I've been drug-free for 29 years thanks to natural healing, which is why I'm so passionate about writing books about how to heal yourself naturally and, and empowering our audience to learn about what you can do. Because you, again, you may be just like me and Ann Bracken where you're, you know, you're the perfect patient and you feel terrible. And, you know, we put in our culture, we put a lot of trust in medical doctors. It's like they went to medical school. Well, they're busy. My brother is a medical doctor. He sees 25 patients before lunch every single day. Mm. The shortest session I have is an hour. Mm -hmm. So you have to realize that doctors are pressed for time and they're not necessarily doing all this research. And if you see more than one doctor who prescribes, you know, this doctor gives you that drug, that doctor gives you another drug, and they're not necessarily talking to each other or researching how all this affects your body. So Ann Bracken, author of Crash, a memoir of over-medication and recovery, any final thoughts for our audience? I would just say if you're experiencing depression or chronic pain to know that there is a way out and to really trust yourself. So if you're like me and you go to a doctor and you you want to go that route, which many people do, and some people find relief. 
um, try that if that's what you feel is going to help you. But if you, if you try that and then it doesn't work, there are all of these natural alternatives that are very, very helpful. And research is showing that you can have the same results or better results by using natural means and you don't have the harm that comes from psychiatric drugs. And I just wanna put this out there as a caution. If you are taking psychiatric drugs, you should never just stop taking them. Um, I would recommend um, a group called the Inner Compass Initiative. They have wonderful uh, instructions and they have groups to help people taper off of psychiatric drugs. And there's also a group called survivingantidepressants.org. So both of those groups specialize in supporting people who want to get off of psychiatric medication. Your doctor can help you, but oftentimes um, they, they may taper too quickly and you would have more difficulty. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. My book, Banish the Blues Now, is a handbook about how to heal yourself naturally without drugs. The original manuscript was a handbook for a network based in Seattle, the Holistic Depression Network. So it's going to give you a lot of action steps, some of which we talked about here today. And remember, when you address your total well-being, physical, energetic, emotional, mental, and spiritual, you can heal yourself naturally. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. (laughs) 